how much were you studying Gen Z and how interesting was that? I mean, at what kind of at what level? More like statistics and things or more? My ideas? love is um, foundational research. Um, so there's, there's quantitative and qualitative. I can do quantitative that's more numbers based and it's, you know, surveys and things like that. But um, on the within qualitative, like at the very beginning, there's like exploratory research found like when you're trying to figure out like what are the needs? Are we underserving certain people like and you really have to go in there and dig um, and talk to people. It's a lot of in-depth interviews. Um, and so that's really what I was doing was um, getting to know their segment better, uh, what their fears and their hopes and um, what they do, what content they consume, you know, doing diary studies, having them check in, you know, three times a day telling me what they're doing, you know, and so it was just a lot of that. And so then you would take that kind of information to um, build empathy and understanding among your team, among the, pro you know, PMs, the, um, the designers and I also socialize it to engineers because I think that's also really important. Uh, and so just sort of getting it, when they get a better picture and they have some empathy, to, like they're just gonna be better designers. You know, they're gonna um, think of things in a different way. Um, and so that's that's what I was doing. That, that's really interesting. So um, what I think is fascinating is first of all, uh, you were mentioning your ability to ask questions during the learning process, your ability to ask questions during the interview process. And now your position is the ability to ask questions of users. Um, maybe talk a little bit about that. First of all, just how to ask good questions. I think that's really interesting. And then the second part is, what is the difference between how a larger organization will approach, you were mentioning these diary studies and things along that line. What are some of the things a larger organization will do to approach asking users questions and getting that kind of data? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the first was how to ask good questions. I think for me, the foundation is I like asking questions. Um, I, and I think that's what one of the big things that drew me to um, UX research was my curiosity. I love people. I like when I was at the apparel company, I did, I was like the sales manager. So I'd go to the showrooms and the markets and, the, and talk to the stores and that sort of thing. Um, and so that's something I think you really need to have in you it, to, to be a good researcher, but it's really, so it's like that curiosity, but it's also you be being driven for the why, like, that's what you want to know. Like you there, and that's more of the qualitative part of things. And it's like, if somebody asks, ask, you know, you, you ask a question, you need to then like, why? Like you just keep probing down and down and down. And you have to just be able to do that as opposed to just being like having surface answers. Like the worst case is like, I, you know, you never ask a yes, no question at all. Um, or, but if, they, if you do, if somebody gives you yes, no, then you have to like, well, why did you say yes? Like, can you give me an instance why, you know? And it's really just probing um, to get at that stuff. And then, I mean, from a really boring point of view, having like a really well-established research plan, knowing what your goals and objectives are and what you're trying to answer, like that's the bedrock. Like once you know that, like I'm a, so anal about a research plan because like, this is what I need to answer. We're all on the same page, you know, we all have, you know, buy in on this. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then when you have that framework, you can go in and be like, I have to ask, I have to answer this stuff and solve these problems. So, you know, make sure my questions answer that. Um, and also I think being really, like I brought up empathy. Um, I think having that in an interview is really important being extremely respectful of the people that, you know, they're the experts here. Like you're not, that's why you're talking to them. And so, you know, um, making sure you know they do, they feel safe and not you know, it, like if you're doing a usability study like you're trying to use like a prototype or something and people do something wrong they blame themselves like that's just human nature and they and so being able to create a space where if they you know you can see that and, and so they don't feel that way things like that i think are also really important and then the second part a part of your question was about big companies versus small companies I think the big, the, the difference with the big companies is that they have deeper pockets and more people. And so, for example, finding people, you, you know, um, I don't have to do that. Uh, we have research ops that always take care of that. Like I tell them what I want and, and who I'd like to speak with. And so they 
get find it. Um, I've in the past, even when I worked at nonprofits, which I did before Google, um, we would use outside uh, vendors to, to find the people. But if you were doing like a, a DIY um, research study, um, I would just, you could use social media, like blast on social media or friends of friends, like that's all it is. And, and honestly, I, I'm never, I can't remember what the statistic is, but like say for usability, it's like eight people are gonna discover 80% of the usability issues or something like, you know, you could talk to 10 people as long as they're, you know, as long as they're the right people, like don't talk to somebody about waffles that's, you know, gluten intolerant. So I don't know, but you know, you need to be having the right audience and, and participants, but, um, but you can, you know, just find people sort of scrappy DIY way. Yeah, but we also have a lot of more resources too, like diary, we get like all this stuff too. Hey, Lilia. Hi, Lynn. Well, I have a question about your journey. Uh, because I, well, a lot of students are trying, well, are working this, in the same path they once you were. <laughs> um, so uh, something I want to ask you is about, um, like, when you find your first projects, the ones that they, they form your portfolio, if you were choosing those or those came randomly to you and you took the challenge, or it was something that you picked because you really like it. And if all this is coming... Like, like I, I know like you make great questions and I was wondering if all this is coming because you feel a lot of interest in the project or you're following like, like, like something that, that you know it should be done that way. You know, maybe your passion is coming more, more from, from, uh, from, from your older career and your experience and then, then the actual projects. Do, do you play with that? Like how, how do you are able to to like jump, like like if you find a project that you're not so uh, motivated to do, are you able to, to to make that jump, or you just like like, or you or you are the one that create your path and you decide which which projects you're gonna do? And I think, and I hope I answered this correctly. Um, but I, and you'll tell, I could first of all never the portfolio. I, I didn't really, I didn't put any UX. Like my portfolio is the portfolio I did for your class, Justin. I, I had, I've no, I've been meaning to change it for like four years, and I haven't because I'm lazy, and it has nothing to do with what I do at all. But so, that, so you know, um, but with regard to picking projects, um, in the beginning, I just, I mean, I wouldn't pick anything that I really like was counter to what I believed in. Um, and I, like I said, I, I totally, you yeah, have to recognize like I was in a place where I had free time and I could pick, you know, pick what I wanted. Um, but I, I'm somebody also who doesn't say no. My biggest hurdle was though, I would say yes to people that I really shouldn't have. Um, and it became a bit bigger headache than because I was doing something like, like I have a, a like a stop me before I volunteer again, like notepad on my refrigerator. Like that's, so that's kind of one of my hurdles, but, um, I do the same thing, I would just take whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever you think, but, but set boundaries of, with regard to those projects. Like say, I'll do the, like if somebody wants you to build a whole website and you're like, I don't have the bandwidth to do that. Cause I'm, you know, working during the day or whatever. It's like, okay, I can take this piece of the puzzle you know, and then you will have that for your portfolio. You probably might have, you know, um, but honestly, in the beginning, I just like, I took most every project, but it's not like all this thing, you know, flying at me um, and, and every, and even UXR, like it's a new field ish, you know, like what people study to be researchers didn't exist when I was in college um, or was barely in its infant, like it was an infancy in my university. Um, but like HCI, human centered, like, you know, interact, like that didn't, um, I mean, human computers and there are because we also have human centered design with all of these like HTTPs. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know. Did, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question though. 